I'm here at the expo area at WTSA in New Delhi, and I'm come here to visit one of the uh, people who are here at the expo, which is Ritikar Vijay, uh, who is with Autonomy. Uh, and uh, he has brought with him the Autobots, which is uh, an autonomous uh, robot for delivery. Tell us a little bit about Autonomy and uh, why this is particularly special and particularly in the context of the fact that we're here in India. I'm the co-founder of uh, uh, Autonomy. Autonomy is a California-based uh, startup. And uh, you know the most important thing is that all these robots are manufactured in India and, and exported to the rest of the world. So uh, at this event, specifically when we are talking about AI for good, so this, this is something which is relevant to physical AI, and that's what we are bringing to the fore. Brilliant. How long has Autonomy been going then? So we are a little about three and a half years old, and uh, you know we have, we have been putting these robots for e-commerce, food and beverage, and uh, grocery deliveries. And the spread is, you know, currently everywhere else, like uh, North America, Europe, and Middle East. Okay. And are there plans to roll it out here in New Delhi? So we are having some discussions for, for closed campuses and airports, uh, you know, where we can deploy these robots because it's not about just the labor shortages, but, uh, you know, critical places, uh, they have restricted, you know, a number of employees. So in that case, we want to have the minimal staff to do more. Right, okay. Also, I presume there must be some limitations in terms of pavements, in terms of, uh, uh, I mean, I don't know how well it, it performs on uneven pavements and things like that. So, uh, I think uh, what we have done is we have tested these robots thoroughly in different type of environments. Uh, it is meant for, you know, urban and suburban uh, or indoor and outdoor, you know, areas to navigate. But uh, if it gets too uh, rocky or hilly, I think that that will be a challenge yet. Tell us a little bit about uh, about this uh, autonomous robot, what its features, what it does, what it can do. So these are fully autonomous uh, delivery robots, which are able to navigate in both indoor and outdoor environments. It has a 3D LiDAR, bunch of cameras and safety sensors to ensure that, uh, you know, wherever this is navigating, it is, you know, in live public. Uh, so these are not purpose-built robots, like for warehouses or factories, but these are more generalized robots. So that's what we are focusing on generalized AI. Right? Can they be customized uh, for particular clients' needs? So, uh, you know, the most important thing is modularity. So these uh, cabins can be customized based on different use cases. Uh, this particular compartment is having two, uh, two of these cabins, one small and other large. But for a few of our customers, we have eight lockers. So these are typically locker on wheels. So, you know, goods to person so solution. So it really depends that, uh, you know, how uh, you would like to have, uh, you know, uh, you. these robots serve for a specific purpose. Excellent. And uh, I mean, this is, ref could this be re refrigerated? So these compartments are customizable. So yes. we can have refrigeration, hot and cold customizations for the application. Okay. Now, Apart from uh, delivery, you've got here something here at the front, which is essentially you could be running commercials and that kind of thing. Is that right? So what we call this is as robot D O O H, digital out of home advertisements. Right. So these robots can actually bring in specific messages or uh, you know advertisements for different brands to promote. As you can see that you know this is Rome International Airport where these robots are live. So uh, you know uh, they are running campaigns for different brands to have a more uh, you know uh, focused customer attention. Right. And it's got a capabilities to talk to, to people as well, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So it has a speaker and mics along with the digital content. Right, is that to say, please get out of the way, please move out of the way, is that right? Or uh... Sometimes you do want to do that, but yes. uh, we are very poli polite when interacting with different people. Now you mentioned North America, I mean, I've been to Los Angeles, I've seen not this uh, particular model, but others. Yes. And sometimes you see them just get stuck there. They're just stuck on the pavement. You come back the next day, they're still there for some reason. You know, one of the most important things is that uh, we are focusing on intra logistics as well, like building to building material transportation. So that is like closed campuses where people are, you know, more insane behaviors. And, uh, you know, we also uh, did something with the Detroit government uh, where we use these robots for food waste pickup from the source to the compost area directly. So I think different use cases have different purposes there and to ensure that the robots are safe, the only way is like, you know, when people know that these robots are there to help instead of, you know, causing a problem. Great, so can we take a little walk with this one? Can we Absolutely. See it move? Absolutely. So, you know, the important thing is that these robots have, uh, you know, a four wheel drive where all these uh, wheels are powered and they can steer as well, yeah. Great. 
So, and is it got, so it has sensors around here to avoid uh, bashing into people, is that right? Yeah. So uh, we can show a zero radius turns where, you know, all the four wheels can steer. How far away can this be controlled? So uh, basically what we do is we map the, you know, target geofenced area. Yes. And then these robots are running autonomously in those areas. Because okay. not everywhere we can have the manual intervention. Right. But as a safeguard, these robots are, you know, having a fallback teleoperation uh, facility available. You've got a very large battery pack there. How long does that last? So that lasts for about five to six hours. Five to six hours. Okay. Yeah. So what happens basically, this gets stuck somewhere. I presume you've got GPS, you can locate where it is. Yeah. If, you've gone, if it's gone a great distance, I'm talking yeah. about. And yeah. And also, you know, it shows a, a, you know, alert on the remote monitoring side. Yes. So we get to know what it is. And if there is a requirement for teleoperation, then we can teleoperate and put it in autonomous mode again. Brilliant. And what about, I mean, it actually says, how am I driving, it says. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, are you going to criticize uh, an, an autonomous robot's uh, driving skills? I mean, you know, sometimes, uh, so we, we are uh, recently running these robots in hospitals in the US and uh, the behavior of the robot in, US, uh, in the hospital is right. different than, you know, at an airport okay. or, you know, urban uh, neighborhoods. Yes. So, you know, we always want to have some sort of feedback that uh, whether the robot is apt in those areas and we get those live, you know. In terms of the manufacturer itself, how does uh, this uh, compare in terms of affordability? Is it cheaper for people to manufacture it here in India? India is very strategic at this point in time from a manufacturing standpoint uh, that, uh, you know, we have some backup options for manufacturing for the world. So we have one of the largest manufac phone manufacturing setup in India, in Noida itself. And uh, these robots are also manufactured in Noida. And, uh, you know, talent pool is available. Manufacturing costs are affordable, and uh, I think what more you want just to create uh, that value for the global ecosystem. And finally, in terms of the rollout, you say you say North America, Europe, etc. I mean, how many of these have you got out there at the present? So we have close to 50 robots which are out in the world, okay. and uh, you know, and customers varies from uh, you know e-commerce, retail, and airports. And you're planning to scale that up. Uh Absolutely. Drastically? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, we look forward to seeing these uh, these robots everywhere. It's certainly extremely impressive. It looks great. Um, and uh, and as I say, I've seen I've seen a number of them around, but this one has a lot more bells and whistles. And uh, and like you say, it's customizable as well for, for clients too. And most importantly, you know, these are very, very rugged. So it's very difficult to topple. So the ones which you see, which were toppled in LA, I mean, this one is a <laughs> difficult piece to do that. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, well, thank you very much for joining us. In the thank you so much. Uh, not in the studio, but here uh, at the expo. And uh, we look forward, uh, hopefully, as I say, to, to catching up with you again at another, perhaps another ITU event, uh, but certainly wish you all the very best. Thank you so much, and I hope you had a good time in India. No, very much so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, if you've enjoyed this interview, which I'm sure you will have, then do check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcast on our podcast channels. And for further information, visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.